Hey guys, welcome to Get On My Neville. I'm your host, Ashley Neville. It's Super Bowl Sunday, so let's talk football. I have a Carolina Panthers analyst join me. Stay tuned. I'm here with Jarrett McGee of Fansided. He's a Carolina Panthers analyst. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Ashley. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining me. So we're going to be talking about the Super Bowl this Sunday. Very exciting matchup between the Panthers and the Denver Broncos. You've been covering and following the Carolina Panthers this entire season. How, what makes them so dominant and so special? Uh, they're playing as a team. Uh, a lot of the things that they were missing last year, they have it this year. Everything finally jailed. I think you can see at the beginning of the year when uh, Josh Norman and Cam Newton had their fight. It seemed like ever since then, they joined in as, as a team. And that's what you're seeing right now. You see it on the field. Um, the run game is so dominant. It's very hard to stop. Cam Newton has stepped his game up tremendously. Um, just a great year. Great all-around year. Nobody expected the success to come this quickly with this team. I know you mentioned the gelling, but, like, sometimes it takes a lot longer for them to kind of mesh. How, how are they able to do it so quickly? When you build off of off of losing, when you get tired of losing, sometimes it just helps you to really get focused. And I believe the team came together this year and they said, hey, you know, we really got an opportunity to do something special. And once they once you do it, once you get that focus, there's no stopping you. You can win anything. You can win any game. So Cam Newton has had his fair shares of up, ups and downs throughout the past couple of seasons, especially um, before he got into the NFL. Mm -hmm. What was it about him that he was just able to turn things around and, you know, be a successful quarterback? I joke all the time. I believe it's because he started reading defenses. Um, my, my criticism of Cam when he first came to the NFL was that uh, he relied a lot more on his talent instead of his ability. If, this, if you really understand what I'm saying, it, he, he was a great player. He was a superstar player. But I don't believe he did everything that it takes to be an NFL quarterback. And once he, I would say that probably one of the biggest success he has is because of Ken Dorsey. Uh, Ken Dorsey is a great, was a great quarterback in college at University of Miami. And um, I believe he translated a lot of that to Cam's game, where he actually told him to, you know, start reading the defense and start looking at what you, what you have in front of you. Start preparing for your game. Start studying your opponents. And I believe he started taking it seriously. And I believe he just translated into a great year this year. So when we take a look at all the other quarterbacks in the league, what separates Cam from all of them? Well, one is because he's a linebacker pretty much playing uh, quarterback. Not many people has the skill set that Cam does. I mean, you have your Michael Vicks, but he's really slender. Uh, he really didn't have the opportunity to run over people. Um, when Cam gets out of the pocket and he starts running it at defenders or safeties or anybody else, you have to make a business decision. Uh, do I really want to tackle this guy? Because, I mean, he's going to put the pressure on you every time he hits you. So it's, um, with that skill set that he has, it's, it's, it's something unbelievable. And he put everything together as far as being a, at a pure pocket passing quarterback now. So that helps. That helps. So he can pretty much do everything. Pretty However, much. the Denver Broncos defense mm. is a force to be reckoned with. Mm. How is Cam – going to play against that? I believe he has to rely on Jonathan Stewart. Um, they're going to have to establish the run game like they've been doing all year. They average 146 yards a game, uh, which is second best in the NFL. Going to have to continue to do the same thing. You got to put pressure on that on that uh, def uh, defensive line of Denver Broncos. If you do that, you'll open up everything else as far as the middle. Um, you're going to have to continue to put the pressure on them that way. So Cam has been kind of handling the media pretty well, I would say. What is your take on that? And what does his handling of the media say about his character? Um, Cam is a better man than me. Because some of those questions that they ask, um, I don't know if you saw the media the media day on Monday. Uh, some of those questions that they asked, some of the things I probably would have went off on. But um, I think that he, he has tremendous poise. Uh, it showed like in his game. I believe he handles the media the same way he handles on the field right now. He takes everything in stride. He lets whatever, whatever come to him, come to him. 
and he actually makes his reads and he plays. Um, I think a lot of the things that's been said about him has been a lot of mis misunderstanding. Uh, the guy does a lot of great things for kids in the community. Uh, you really can't find any reason that you really want to hate him. Besides, if you just don't like Cam Newton, that's the only reason that you really just don't like him. I was one of the ones that uh, when he was at Auburn, I didn't like him either. So, I mean, it's just one of those things. You have to grow to like him. He's always handing, you know, the touchdown balls to all the fans. He's signing autographs of his on his shoes for fans. He does a lot within the community. He really cares and respects the fan base. Why do people hate him? That is a really hard thing. I think when people are successful and when people see other people doing things um, against their teams, I believe a lot of it is because of his skill. Uh, because he's not playing for the other people's team. Um, a lot of people want to bring in the race issue as well. Um, I, think it, I think it has more to do with the culture. I think a lot of the people that, that say things against Cam, they really don't understand the culture. Uh, you have to really grow up in these days. Like, I'm, I'm an older guy, so a lot of the things I don't understand as well. But I will tell you, if I got in the end zone and I did touch that, if I got in the end zone, if I was playing in the, in the NFL, uh, I would probably celebrate for 15 minutes as well. I don't blame him. Uh, that's one of the hardest things to do. So you got to understand, when he goes out there and he's playing this game as like a kid, it's a kid's game. When you go out there and you're playing the game like a kid, um, you enjoy yourself. You have fun. So Cam, you know, didn't want to discuss the topic of him being a black quarterback. Mm -hmm. And he said that it wasn't an issue and it's, the media was making it an issue. Mm -hmm. How do you interpret his response and do you agree with him? Well, I look at it as, as Kind of like he kind of opened, he opened the can when uh, he he announced that at media day. I think he kind of opened it on himself. But then he saw the backlash he was getting for it, and then I believe he backed away from it a little bit. Um, I don't believe in 2016 he still should be looked at as a black quarterback. He's we've had black quarterbacks in the in the Super Bowl before. Last year we had Russell Wilson. The year before that was Russell Wilson. I mean. We should really get past that now. He's, it's about playing the game. I think he's handled it very well, though. I would have to agree with that for sure. Because I don't, I don't think it's an issue anymore. No, no. We, we, we've gone past that. Going back to Doug Williams, I mean, he was the first. So, I mean, the first to win one. So, after the first, we shouldn't talk about that anymore, right? Yeah, I mean, it's almost like the media is trying to create something out of out of nothing at this point, because I feel like it doesn't really matter what the color of your skin is. If you have the talent to perform at a certain position, mm -hmm. you should have that opportunity to do so. Yeah, yeah, that should be it. That so then, um, to me, just talk, kind of talk about the coaching staff too. Ron Rivera has done a great job uh, recruiting a lot of the different guys, helping the team, you know, behind the scenes, some stuff that we don't see. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that and how they've made an impact on the team success. Um, I think everybody has made uh, great strides this year from Coach Sh uh, Shula to, as I mentioned before, Ken Dorsey um, and Ron Rivera. I believe that um, he had a bad stigma on him a couple of while, a, a while back. Um, the riverboat run thing, I believe, was, was taken too far. I believe that he just took the chances that, that were given to him in the games, and he's learned from that, and I believe now he has a lot of confidence in the team. I think when he did a lot of those different things, he was scared. He was playing not to lose the games. But now I believe that he is truly confident in his team. He's confident in his staff. The You're going to see probably next year a lot of those, those coaches on the staff will get jobs elsewhere. Um, they've done an excellent job this year. They've gelled together. The team is a, is a truly a family. Uh, if you listen to some of the things that Cam say, he'll tell you how those those coaches on that staff are kind of like his father figures. And you don't hear a lot of coaching staffs that say that. You can look at Chip Kelly and what happened with the Eagles, how everybody talked about him. You won't get that in Carolina. Everybody in those doors are there for each other. And it's amazing. It's amazing. So what do you think the deciding factor is going to be in the Super Bowl? And what do you think the toughest one-on-one -on -one matchup is going to be? It's odd to say, but I believe that the toughest for the Panthers is going to be the nickel position. Uh, whoever that the Broncos put in the slot position at wide receiver, 
and going against Cortland Finnegan uh, is probably going to be the advantage for Denver. Um, as far as the Panthers goes, um, again, I go back to that uh, defensive line for the uh, Denver Broncos. It's going to be um, – it's gonna be it's gonna be a different game going against the Panthers besides going against the the Patriots. Patriots had a makeshift offensive line, but the offensive line they're going against against the Panthers is a superior offensive line. They've been opening holes all year. They continue to do that in this game. Is I don't believe it's gonna be uh, too close. I don't think it's gonna be close at all. You don't think so? No. So what are your expectations and predictions for this game? My predictions are kind of outrageous. I've this year I've always quoted them as being like um, a close games. Even the NFC Championship game, I said it was going to be twenty eight to twenty one, and they completely dominated the game. So what I'm going to I'm going to say, and I'm going to go out on a limb. I think it's going to be forty five to seventeen. I believe you're going to see Brock Osweiler as well. Wow. Well, maybe it's going to be opposite of what you're thinking. About. <laughs> I forgot you're on the West Coast, so yeah, I'm pretty sure you're thinking it's going to be opposite. Um, you know, I'm a Tennessee guy, so, you know, I've heard Peyton Manning's name my, my entire life. Um, but I believe that it's going to be a hard game for them. If they can establish the running game, if Denver can establish the running game, it's going to be a long night for Peyton. Do you think having the blowout game that they did against the Arizona Cardinals maybe gave them a little bit too much confidence going into this game? Like, did, do you think it affected them in any way? No, I think it was good for them because uh, the game before that when they played against Seattle and they got off into that big lead, um, you saw Seattle storm back. I think that right there was a wake-up call to let you know, let them know that, okay, when we get ahead, when we play our game, when we do what we were supposed to do, once we get ahead, keep your foot on the throat, keep your hands on, keep your foot on the pedal, and keep going. And I believe they saw last week that they can do it. So what do the Panthers need to do to, for, to be the first one to get the momentum? And what do they need to do to maintain it throughout the entire game? Uh, play the game. Play their game. The game that they've been playing the whole year, how they got here, rely on the run game, rely on the uh, read option, and, and let everything come to them. Make make Hughes, make uh, Denver play their game. But they have to defend them. Don't go chasing points. Don't go doing things like trick plays. Stick to what got you to the big dance. And they'll be fine. We well, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoy the game on Sunday. We do the same. Hopefully, we'll win, and you know we won't worry about that West Coast Denver Bronco thing. That's going to do it for this edition of Get on My Neville. But before we go, my prediction is the Carolina Panthers thirty-seven and the Broncos twenty. Everyone, enjoy your Super Bowl Sunday.